Okay. Oh, hello, everyone. My name is Song Jiang. I'm currently a PhD student at the University of California, Los Angeles. I'm going to present our paper about a novel framework hints to predict the citation time series for new publications. This work is done with my co-author Bernard Koch and my advisor, Professor Yi Zhou San. Let's first talk about the motivation. There are lots of citation papers coming out every year. If we can predict the scientific, scientific impact of those papers, it will be much helpful for many academic applications. For example, authors can know what to study, readers, readers and academic recommender systems uh, can know which paper has important contributions. It also helps to uh, it also helps the funding agen agencies to identify who and which field they should give funding. Because, uh, because the uh, impact is very hard to quantify, citation costs of citation papers are, are usually used as an approximation of the uh, citation impact. Uh, many scientific papers have uh, reached their pink impact. Uh, in the first few years after publication. We draw a figure that shows the density of papers in view of the year when a paper accumulates 50% of their total citations. We check both the computer science papers and phys physics papers. The red line is the median, and we can observe that more than half, year, more than half papers receive their half citation cost in the first five years. So it is very important to predict the scientific, in, the scientific impact in early stage. Existing models for citation predictions can roughly be divided into two parts. The first one is to uh, use uh, prior knowledge from domain experts and model the citation time series using some statistical models. These statistical models can describe the citation mechanism or the citation patterns. Recently, some researchers also use machine learning or deep learning models to learn the citation mechanism implicitly, either uh, extracting the citation mechanism by domain experts or by, do or by neural networks. Uh, those methods uh, in these previous uh, works assume the, that the citation values in early years are available. However, as we know, a new paper doesn't have any citation, any leading citation values. Therefore, those models cannot work for a new paper. We need some, we need a new method. To predict the citation time series, we need to, we need some citation clues. There are some clues visible to domain experts even before they read the paper. For example, uh, by reading the title, the abstract, the researchers can identify whether this new paper is about a hot topic in their field. And papers in a famous venue is also likely to be higher quality. And with the uh, author list. Uh, they can identify productive labs and uh, re reputable uh, researchers. The reference of a paper also shows whether this paper is based on some very high impact, impactful papers, and thus indicates the potential quality of this paper. And this, these factors are basically the metadata of a new paper and uh, they are naturally uh, encoded in a heterogeneous information network. Metadata can tell us whether this new paper uh, has reputable authors or in cutting edge venue. Beyond these indicators, uh, the historical the historical temporal trend in terms of citation is also very informative to the impact of a new paper. For example, uh, the historical temporal trend can reflect the trending topic, topics and the rising star uh, researchers. Therefore, we use a dynamic heterogeneous information network to model the metadata. 
a dynamic information, a dynamic heterogeneous information network encodes uh, three aspects: uh, the new papers metadata, the relations between those metadata, as well as the historical chains of those metadata. Now we can form, uh, formalize the problem of uh, new paper citation time series prediction. Given a new paper, let's say it is P, and paper P is published at year T. We also have a dynamic bibliographic network, which actually is a DHI and a dynamic heterogeneous information network. We denote it as a capital G. Our goal is to learn a function F, and this function will map the new paper P as well as the dynamic uh, heterogeneous network, uh, which describes the context of the paper, of a paper P. We want to map them to the future L years uh, citation time series of this new paper P. Please note, please note that here we want to predict the citation count in every year, not just a cumulative citation count. Uh, we propose a novel framework called HINS. HINS covers the temporal and relational information encoded in a DHIN before publication year into the citation time series after publication. HINS, uh, HINS has three modules. The first module is to uh, is to encode the to encode all nodes in each year's heterogeneous bibliographic network into some low dimensional embedding. And the second module is to use the learning embedding to impute a representation for the new paper in the years prior to its publication. And in the last module, this imputation is converted to the parameters of a time series generator. The generator encodes prior assumptions about citation processes. Finally, this uh, generator will predict the long-term citation trajectory for a new paper. Okay, now let's discuss the details of every module. The first one uh, is about uh, a dynamic heterogeneous network embedding. To learn the node embedding of a, a dynamic heterogeneous information network, we need to capture both the heterogeneity and the dynamic of this network. Oh, okay, here we use the relational JSON layers to update the node embedding by weightly aggregate the neighbors according to their relation types. It can capture the heterogeneous effect between a new paper and its different types of metadata. To model the dynamic, we have an assumption of the bibliographic network, which is the which is the which is that most entities will not change too much in a short in a short time. Uh, for example, a researcher's interests are usually within one field, and a venue's theme is similar in adjacent years. Based on this assumption, we propose a temporal alignment that forces the embeddings from uh, for the same entity in nearby years to be close to each other. Now we have the embedding for all nodes in the bibliographic network, and to predict a newly published paper's citation time series, we need a distinct representation in the years before publication for this new paper. To learn such an embedding, we must have some information of this new paper. Although a paper is new, its metadata may already exist in previous years' bibliographic networks. Therefore, we impute an embedding sequence for a new paper by aggregating the embedding of all its metadata. And uh, here we also consider the metadata type with a trainable weight so that we can capture the different uh, effect of the different metadata types. Okay, now we, we can have a representation of a new paper. And we want to use this embedding to predict the future citation time series. 
Intuitively, a paper's impact will fade gradually. And one possible reason is that new ideas and new research topics will always appear and uh, they will attract the attention of the research community. Following a previous paper, we model a new paper's citation trajectory as a log normal survival function a long time. We have three parameters in this function. The eta captures the intrinsic value of a paper, which also named as fitness. And the mu captures the time when a paper reaches its citation peak. And sigma models the rate of decay in terms of a paper's citation count. And finally, we can have the predict uh, citation time series of a new paper based on this generator. Uh, to train the model, we uh, design an objective which contains two parts. The first citation, uh, the first one is the citation uh, prediction loss function, which intends to minimize the citation prediction error. Please note that this citation count is in log scale. And the temporal alignment regu uh, regularizer, uh, which makes the embedding more reasonable. As we said, that the embedding of a same entity in in a, a in a close years they should be similar. And we also use a parameter beta to control the strength of the alignment regularizer. Okay, now uh, we will introduce our experiments. We evaluate our, our framework on two datasets, a minor and APS. A minor is about papers in computer science and uh, APS are physics papers. This figure shows the five years cumulative citation count distribution of papers in both datasets. And we use two evaluation metrics, the MAE and RMSE. Please note that both metrics are in log scale. And this table shows the uh, comparison results of our model. Overall, overall, our model achieves better performance than the baseline models. We also study the effect of the temporal alignment regular razor. The, RMS, or the RMSLE shows a similar pattern on both datasets. It first become better and then uh, worse with a larger alignment but with an uh, appropriate strength, the model can achieve optimal results uh, on both datasets. That indicates the importance of our alignment. To better understand how Hint works, we also visualize the imputed embedding and the three citation parameters, parameters learned by our model. In this figure, a brighter color point is a paper with high citation after five years. We can see that our model can distinguish the high impact papers. This is also an interpretation of our, um, of our model. Although our model can achieve, uh, although our model can achieve a good performance, it also have, has some limitation. For example, our model cannot work well on papers who will become impactful many years later after the publication year. This phenomenon is also called sleeping beauties. For example, some neural networks papers in 1980s, they become very popular with the recent development of deep learning. But our model cannot predict, uh, cannot have a good prediction for those papers. Okay, that's all of our paper. Uh, thanks for listening. And if you have any questions, we can talk offline. Thank you.